Welcome to the MJ38 show, episode number five, definitively number five. The- I want to talk about that in a second. Okay. Welcome in, though. Hello. Hopefully your day's going well, ending so. well, starting well, all the above. And if not, we're here for that, too. The ups and the downs. Yeah. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great. Today's a good day for me. Good day? Yeah. Love that. For sure. Especially if podcast day is a great day. Oh, I love it. Gotta love it on Thursday. Yeah, I love podcast day. Back on Thursdays. A little late in the evening. Had a great day, though. Yeah, so we knocked out some stuff. I like having off days and then being able to, yeah, I guess my second off day in a row, being able to knock out some stuff. It feels great. Yeah. Especially if you... It's like a, it's like a Sunday, I guess, because, you know what I'm saying? I guess we work on the uh, service industry schedule, so weekends are kind of a... Pretty much typically working almost every weekend. Yeah, we re- we relate to a weekend by having two days off in a row. Yeah, so today's my Sunday. <laughs> yeah, on a Thursday. The second day off in a row. And I'm like, yeah, laundry, do some dishes. Let's go to H-E-B, go some groceries. If you don't yes. know what H-E-B is, I'm sorry, because it's the shit. Yeah, we do. We live in Texas. Incredibly blessed with a great local grocery chain. So, so nice. It's There's so a lot nice. Kroger's of all the places I could have randomly moved to in my life, <laughs> I'm glad Texas came up. Super lucky. Yeah. Yeah, H-E-B is awesome. I went to H-E-B today as well. Yeah, people got like Kroger's and like Randall's and shit. Like Albertsons, Winn-Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> they got it all. Wherever the hell you're from, they got some stuff going on there. Yeah. But H-E-B is legit. H-E-B is tired. I got Texas-shaped blue cheese-filled burgers today. Texas-shaped? Yeah, they're shaped like, <laughs> like a Texas. Are they gigantic? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like this big. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's like a, a patty. I like nine, 10 ounces maybe. Oh, like eight ounces maybe. Either and uh, they got blue cheese and stuff in them, so... Texas I'm excited size. to make those. That's only something you Texas find at H-E-B. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. They have coconut shrimp, like, ready to make. I love that. I made some for lunch Stuff today. Stuff you just pop in the oven real quick. Yeah. It's like Delicious. 400 degrees for 18 minutes. Boop, 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 boop. I got a meal. Coconut I'm shrimp. I'm chef. I'm um, no, 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 no. I got coconut shrimp. Yeah. I'm, I'm eating well. Dude, that's, you're nice. That's a good dinner, you know? Yes. So shout out to H-E-B. H-E-B is the best. Yes. But, uh, so, a couple quick pod notes I want to start off with. I guess the first one we ever kind of addressed. This is episode five. The reason we kind of had a little discrepancy was uh, we kind of lost the pod there for a little bit. We recorded the whole episode and then just, I don't know what happened. I think we had switched mics and then we had, had switched back in the setups. And then like whenever we over, or, like just recorded the same audio over the same type of file. I don't know. Something wrong happened. I think the sample size was off or half. That's a lot of technical off. stuff. But some, some bullshit happened. <laughs> yeah. When we went to go listen to the podcast back, the, my voice was a super distorted, yeah. like unbearingly so. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Like, I'm going to you <laughs> What's up, dog? No, like, yeah, like, it, it had to be like an album in the Chipmunks effect. Which, like, it was a whole, I don't know. Or it had to be like a playback at like double speed, but not, it didn't take up twice as long time and duration. And, you know, like, it just like sped up all your vocals by like double or or, or whatever. At like a level you couldn't, you couldn't sample rate right out or something yeah, like I that. I don't know. Either way. So that was the lost episode. It was great. They're all great. We're kind of just riffing here. But either way, this is five for sure, definitively. We could put just your vocals on Patreon. <laughs> The last episode, or we can just drop it the way it is. Yeah, that'd be Alvin cool too. That'd be cool too. Either way, someone out there can fix it. Maybe but this is number four because I'm tired of saying one point seven eight. Okay, this is five. Okay, <laughs> okay. But we're this is fifth. oh, this is the fifth. Yeah, we're going crazy. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we're going in. So I thought that was yeah. So we've done six, but this is five. Yes, so I'm with you. Yes, yeah. So then we had to kind of Omaha into doing it on on that Sunday episode. Yeah, because normally we're on Thursdays. This, today's my Sunday. <laughs> that whole episode was like the Omaha episode, right? Yeah, <laughs> explained it on the like, pod. Can't break up, please. <laughs> oh, no, I think that we. I don't know. Either way, either way, that's the first note. Second note, I think I just or real quick within the because I think I was uh, watching back some of the clips and then within my explanation of craps, I just missed a detail that I don't know. I like craps and uh, I don't want to be misinformed to people about craps. <laughs> but like I said, seven, eleven, twelve are the first are like the only rules that you have to worry out are not uh, that don't play on the first roll. But it's also two, three. So two, three, seven, eleven, twelve. That's no no point is established. That's why snake eyes are bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got whenever you. yeah, whenever it's the first roll, it's like ah oh, fuck. Got yeah. you. House wins. If, if you're playing the the money. The odds of that game, if you didn't have to line. worry about two and three, would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I guess seven and eleven are good though, off the rip until it's sta- it's established. As I was kind of talking about, like you could feel whenever it's coming again. That's right. Yeah, because seven is the most common number. Got you. That, that, that's that's what craps is based around. It's based around the hierarchy of like if it's like a bell curve Venn diagram or a bell curve diagram, it's like a, in the middle of seven, like the most possible number of combinations: six, one, five, two, four, three, and Got then the you. other way back. Along, you know, what I'm saying, but there's only one way to roll a twelve and only one way to roll a two. You know. Got you. So like those are on the outside of the spectrum. Got you. So six and eight, you know, and then like respectively falling down on the other side. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's built around that statistical probability. And then, and then what are you gambling on? That you're going to beat what? But, but sometimes, I, I guess there's a lot of ways to gamble on it. But I guess what I was using the craps metaphor for 
metaphor for was the uh, idea that you could feel the flood coming or you could feel the the crash. Yeah, of course. It's like, oh, it's inevitable. Like, someone's going to roll a seven soon. Like, that's a, it's the most likely number. Yeah. I'm going to pull all my money back. And then get out of and there. And then it happens. Yeah. Get out of there quick. That's nice. Avoid the misstep. So that, that was the whole premise of that. But yeah, some quick, quick recorrect of mis- misinfo. And then also I did some more research. I looked into it. And Mandarin is not the most common language well done. in the world. It is the, it is the most native language, the most native speakers. Like the U.S. or English is the most common language now, most spoken language, native and non-native speakers. And Mandarin is second. But the uh, English has like 350 or 370 plus million like native speakers. And then Mandarin has over 900 million native speakers. So I think we were still kind of onto something with the That would kind of be the default. Yeah, the premise there was go back to if you were going to get your system rebooted, maybe it would be likely that the most common language used in humans would be the most likely to reboot your system if yeah. your system was rebooting from like a fucked up place. If you got concussed. Yes, if yeah, that was the premise. A glitch happened in your because people p- these people are waking up, they're getting concussions and then waking up speaking like full blown formal Mandarin. Yeah, and it's like people are like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" Super crazy. Some people in that scenario. Yeah, super wild. Yes. Yeah, quick notes. Quick notes about yeah, the pods. Yeah, want to stay to accurate. I'm yeah, super open. Because we're kind of just wrong. riffing off the top here. I'm trying to like talk about more about the concepts, but like sometimes the the actual information is also very nice. Yeah, <laughs> just a little a little trivia. I don't know. So then we were. <laughs> so, oh, I remember hearing about that on the fucking MJ38 show. Yeah, if you go talk about you it, you ever go shit. to whoever wants to be a millionaire, Slumdog Millionaire, way, <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire yourself in a way into some M's. Yeah, well, I want to be aid you hopefully with that. I can, yeah, hopefully I can help you out with that. I don't want to tell you some hopefully wrong I can shit. Give you some random shit, and you're like, Mandarin is most natively. It's Mandarin. I was built for this moment. Two, three, seven, eleven, and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so Have close to getting this movie? sound right. Yeah, yeah. We're still adjusting the sound. Can, Go ahead. Tell them about right. Slumdog Millionaire. That movie's fucking awesome. Yeah, I guess that that joke was a a, a riff on or a, a jest to the movie Slumdog Millionaire. Never seen it. It's great. I'm sure. Uh, it, it, what, what did it win? Whatever the movies win, Oscars. Oscars. Yeah, it and won an Oscar. It was great. I think it won great like movie. the Sundance Film Award too. Yeah, I think it won multiple for best screenplay. Multiple, I don't know. Yeah, multiple awards, but that that movie has like a premise kind of based in it that like you can go on to. I'm sure if you've never seen the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, it's uh, it was a popular show back in the day, but just a game show. You go on there's A, B, C, and D, and you can answer all these <laughs> questions and get to a million dollars. Like ten questions or however many questions it is. Yes, you have three lifelines along the way, and like this. Guy gets onto the show. Where is it? It's, it's based on in some other country. In India, somewhere. I'm pretty sure. India? Yeah. I want to say India. Okay, yeah. Maybe Pakistan. Maybe like somewhere in the Middle East. Somewhere in Asia. Yeah, somewhere, I'm not sure. Somewhere over or there. Or in Asia. Over there somewhere. On that side of the globe. But it's based out of there. And he, end up, he ends up getting onto their version of that show. Same premise. Answer these questions. Win a million dollars. And like he's able to answer these questions, even though he doesn't have any formal education, just through his life experiences and like the path that his life has led him on throughout his life has given him the answers to like... To some of these questions, like the eighth question is like something, some and some random reference to some random book, but he happened just so happened to have that book at his house or at this orphanage or what you know, and he stumbled like the across two, this. The two runners are like his life, and then it's like the show, and then it'll be like his life, and then all of a sudden it pops back into it's like question three. Yeah. What, what was the popular children's series Roger Rabbit portraying in in their? whatever their motifs of display and then it flashes back to him like having that show running and then somebody comes up and talks to him and he's like in his scene or whatever and then it's like it's a nice bounce back in juxtaposition mm-hmm. movie's a 10 out of 10 it's fucking great love it awesome movie i love the uh, i love the uh ideas that they're trying to emphasize through that movie yeah i think there's yeah i think that's why i won so many awards that's, <laughs> like that's it's a, like a, a a good virtual visualization of some true shit that we can all kind of feel and empathize with and kind of it's, it's kind of like a wishing star it's like man I wish my life could like be worth a million dollars or <laughs> I wish my life could give me answers that would give me riches or whatever. I think that it's just, if it, it feels like, it feels like you want life to be like that. Like you want life to be set up so that you have all the answers within yourself. Mm-hmm. That would be super nice if it was like literally 15 questions and I knew all the answers because I'd seen all that shit. It's, like, <laughs> it's not quite that simple, but like it, it, it do be like that though. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. There's a truth in there for sure that, that I think they hit on and displayed well and, Evidently so, so much so that like people were just drawn to the movie. And were like, this is, you win. <laughs> You're the best. That's an interesting thought. Number one. People are drawn to things that are so universally true that mm-hmm. like, that's what makes them popular. Mm-hmm. Because some people would think that popularity like is a beauty pageant. I don't know, like a contest based on things that isn't like truth. 
Yeah. Like there's like pageantry involved or political or bias, vanity involved. vanity involved. But then like I think music and like movies and art through medium of like entertainment is people are drawn to it when it's really true. Yeah. Yeah, when they're able to touch on something that you're able to kind of, yeah, f- feel and empathize with, even if you can't even articulate that you believe that thing too. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, I fuck with us. Have yeah, you seen Slumdog Millionaire? That. I might feel like my life's like that sometimes. <laughs> like, that's the best you can do to explain it. I so. get that same feeling from uh, uh, Life of Pi. Victoria showed me that movie. I haven't seen it. Oh, you need to check it out. Really? It's like, there's, there's a, a similar kind of motif in that. Or, yeah, it, it's, I'm not even going to talk about anything about it because you just need to watch it. I've I'd never seen it either until like a year and a half, like recently, relatively recently within my life. And yeah, we can watch, watch that it. as a podcast. I'll watch it this week and then come back and we'll talk about it next week. We'll yeah. have a book club. I need to watch it again too. I'll watch it again. It okay, was that, yeah, it was really good. It was dope. But so. uh, yeah, very sim- similar in that. I think it won an award as well, or it was at least nominated for sure. I love that that's what we base our our society around is like awarding things that touch our souls or I think inspire us, draw us forward. Mm-hmm. We're not awarding shit that's like, there's human in that too. What do you mean? Or like the idea that uh, it's not like necessarily a true reflection of like the actual the truth. Actual, yeah. Yes, that that can happen. The too. nominations and who actually wins and whatever. You know, yeah. All that, all that shit. Sometimes it comes through. Yes. Yes, for sure. And then the popular opinion. But it's got human involved. The but the idea behind it is trying to like yeah we're trying to put forth what we consider to be this is our, this is this is the shit everyone's got to be like who doesn't agree that this is the <laughs> shit Come let's on. try to find that out yeah right. More or less. I'm willing to say that they get it out of everybody. Anyone disagree? Anyone disagree? I want to hear about it. Tell me about it. Why do you Let's think talk that, about it. Yeah. I hope that's what the conversations are like. We're not judges, yeah, so we yeah, don't but know. But the, the human in it that I was kind of referring to is like yeah, people are trying to, en- or like uh, I guess envious, but also trying to control the narrative and trying to gain favor and trying to whatever. You do, do all the landscaping and politicking. Yeah. I hate politics that. ain't just in politics. No, that's a great bar. Uh-huh. Yeah, we were talking about the other day privately. Mm-hmm. That's just tight. So yeah, I don't know how words work exactly, but I think with popularity, like true popularity, you can't mm-hmm. stop it when it's just too true. It's too true. It's gonna like break your dam. It's unfortunate for anybody that would not like it to be, because sometimes it's like that's a that's a great narrative. Like it would be super convenient if that were true, because then all of these things would go that way. But actually, this thing is more true right here, and it's like the dam just broke. You're we're about to learn things about stuff now. Because... <laughs> things about stuff is about to happen. Convincing yeah. things about stuff. <laughs> that's like a that's a problem for people that want to try to control narratives because the truth yeah. like breaks through. You think you know things? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, then you're gonna have to learn some things about stuff. You're gonna learn things about stuff that you didn't know. Yeah, that's what happens when like just truth breaks through. Yeah, I feel that way about anybody that just works it's hard. Unknown at first. Yeah. Or maybe potentially unknown or suppressed either way, but it breaks through. Yeah, it's potential. Mm-hmm. It's potential and then it becomes kinetic. It's like, it's real. It's like, oh, that thing that was brewing was actually brewing. Or like timelines are playing out. So like when someone's like doing well, that's they're they're trending upward. And then like someone's uh-huh. like not doing well, they're like trending downward. And then like seasons rotate and then like like levels of separation happen. And then the person that was doing like well can like start to not do well. And then like the, the overall graph of like three years could be like we started with this guy's doing bad, this guy's doing good. But then he fell off and this guy picked it back up. And now they're like at this trajectory. Like that shit happens. But also it could be like you break off and then this guy falls off but only for just a little bit. And then he keeps going upward. And this guy like pops up but then he gets defeated. Like you mm-hmm. never know. Mm-hmm. You, there's, there's a million simulations for like how games play out and how winners happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can but run the, the simulation a million times. But then when you put that back into what – like you have control over one of those simulations. So you can mm. choose to just never not do well. Like you can have like a emergency fail safe systems where it's like. What I do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so like the, you, if, if you could define. Get bucks all day. <laughs> <laughs> Only bucks. That's where I'm at like on a, on a baseline, like uh, at the front frontier level. Okay. But let's say like a catastrophe happens. Of course. And then like you're like. For sure. Or. Yes, that, that like when you say like that, uh, you sound like you're saying like someone breaks their leg, like a catastrophe could happen in that sense. But also just like I don't, you get sick, even just getting sick is a catastrophe, you know? Yeah. So you start like trending downward, but then it's like, what do I bare necessity need to make sure that I do so that we don't like spiral out of control here? Mm. Which would probably like try to go to work so that we keep the money straight. And then like gotta perform at work. Yep. Which means showing up on time and like doing the shit. Yeah. Just like bare minimum. Doing your job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making sure you showing up and doing it. Yeah. And then a lot of times it's like 
Maybe for me, it's eat healthy because I probably can't go to the gym. Everyone has a different value after that. <laughs> it's like, we got to make sure we have a place to sleep and put our shit. Yeah, have to. And then uh, <laughs> after that's kind of like, well, it, everyone would vary in the like, number two and three answers. That's true. For, after what, what, would, what would stop them from like, spiraling or, yeah. From on the chart of season to season growth, like making uh, sure you go up. Mm-hmm. One of it's just like doing the right thing. For me, it's like working out. Yeah, that's what Moving I was going to say body. too. Yeah. If, if I'm sick, it's like at least eating healthy because I if you can't work out, I don't want to compound like bad decisions. I can't work out and I now can't I'm eating I'm terrible. Water and yeah, what I'm eating, I'll, I'll fast. I like fasting. You know, like sometimes like not eating anything for 24 hours, I could do that. I think that's helpful. That's nuts, especially when you're sick though. Like yeah. you can like drive. I'm like I was gonna boop, reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Digestive system reboot. Just yeah, do nothing. Just let it go back to. It's fine. It's fine. Home. It, it, it can maintain homeostasis. It knows how to do that. I just won't give it anything. It knows how to do that for sure. And especially people, like twenty four hours. That's not that long. Yeah, that's not that bad. That's Some people bad. would say like you're definitely going to go into like uh, deprivation and hunger and starvation mode, and you might have like uh, cortisol drops and stuff like that because you're stressed or out. Cortisol spikes. Spikes. Uh, increases yeah. cortisol. Yes, yes, yes. Stress drop into my system. It's like a base drop of cortisol. Is what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stressed <Yes>. out. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> Sway. Yeah. <laughs> no, but so then as I think about this thing more and more, it's like, okay, let's say like, how does the nature of doing poorly in a season come about? It's probably because like, if you're doing well, you're doing well. So you could make a bad choice. So it's like, focus on being disciplined. That would be one way to like, make sure season to season you don't like fall off is like reestablish discipline for everything that you're doing. But then also when something does happen like to you, then you have to like not compound the bad decisions and then like curtail your, mm-hmm. your, mm-hmm. the slump. Yes. Yeah. Get out of it and then reboot back, like push quick to back to your baseline and then like get back into the vision of creating the future. Yeah. And I feel like that's uh. but then it sounds super easy on page, but you just see people like. It's simple. In the in, chart. In theory. Yeah. Someone just like. It's like a stock. It's like, look at this stock. You want to see it do this, right? It's going to do this. <laughs> you want it to go that way, ultimately. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> because as this, because, no, well, that's all based on this initial premise that I started by saying, okay. like, if you're, when the season change happens, like that stock trend that you were on, will like, things will happen. Like that, do stuff. We'll break it in the way based on your decision. Yes, I think because yeah, you live in a result. That's one thing I had realized, or come. That, that's like one thing that kept coming into my mind on these super mega multivitamins. It's like you're living in a result, and I think like, that's kind of what you're talking about. Things yeah. will happen, and like yeah, either ksh, ksh, or ksh, yeah, based on the forks that you hit. Past, yes, in the past, like you created the, you took the choices that built the. The ecosystem that you're going to walk into or like the energy space the that you're drawn to or the garden that you're going to be in, whatever mm-hmm. metaphor you like, dog. You painted that picture. Now look at it. Like yeah, that's what it is. Lay in it. You yeah. bed. <laughs> it's not like you do. I, I don't think it's like you make bad choices. First off, like just bad stuff just doesn't, does, doesn't just happen to people. Like it does. It does. Like I've seen it happen. Just it happen does. to people. But like there's also a way to curtail your suffering so that you can not have like a shitty life afterwards. Yeah, I think Jordan Peterson describes it as it could be uh, a catastrophe or uh, uh, a catastrophe, but not a not a massacre, but some, something to that effect. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it could be like a terrible thing, but it doesn't have to be hell. Yeah, that's what that's the thing that you have to focus on is like holding your composure. In my opinion, that's what it is for me, holding my own composure of like uh Man, I didn't. Things didn't go my way, but that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna just like still perform tomorrow's mission. Like same, same shit tomorrow, same shit the next day. Let's mm-hmm. keep it moving. Let's start getting the bucks back up. Put up some shots. Let's yeah. keep putting up shots. Really high percentage it, over here. Yeah, it, yeah. Sometimes think shit happens. Shit happens. Dangerous world <laughs> that we talked about. Yeah, shit just happens. The the floods coming. Dangerous or uh, random chaotic shit's gonna happen. Things don't go as planned. We kind of know that. I think we kind of know that. You know, but. Trying to curtail it and get back into the uh, that that yeah <laughs> and then take responsibility for it even if if it's even better if it's not your fault it is even better for you to take if you can take responsibility for something that's not your fault that's even more powerful than taking than obviously you have to take responsibility for your own shit I guess start there <laughs> like if, but once you master that stat you will then in, in my opinion I enjoy taking responsibility somebody else was late I'm like hey I'll put that on me that's my responsibility I'm gonna work harder for you cause like you should or like someone else broke a glass they're like who broke this glass I was like oh you put that on my tab I'll take responsibility nobody wants to take responsibility for tab. it I'll take responsibility for that glass getting broken and then like people the person that was mad was like well that's impressive 
<laughs> it's just like well, can't be mad at you. <laughs> it's like, but I just I feel that like uh, if there's a problem, like for instance, if there's a bigger problem in the ecosystem, like I want to be able to use this thing, but it's never had no one ever refills it. Everyone uses it till it's empty, and then a lot of times we go to use it and it's just like empty because we did not refill it in the consumption process. It's like oh, I'll become responsible for that problem that nobody's taking responsibility for. It's just super easy. All accountable for. Yeah. It's really it's really powerful to do that. That's what I'm saying though. Like yeah. that helps you come, yeah, yeah, yeah. come out of that curtail saying. and shit like that. Saying. But I also think there's like, I guess like to play devil's advocate, it's like, I guess you don't want to overstep and take like, a, t- some, take someone else's chance to take responsibility. Maybe someone sure. else. Yeah. Or I guess, uh, maybe not overstep your bounds, but don't try to bail someone out just because bailing them out is like the, maybe like a nice thing to do. Yeah. It's not helping anybody. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, but it is a sweet sentiment. Or like, yeah, uh, there's the, 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 the truth that you just described and like the ability to, to adopt extra responsibility that's like kind of like uh, where responsibilities lie in the gray area. It's like, oh, we all yeah. use this thing. But it's like, I'll be the one to fucking clean the thing that we all use and no one's like, we all kind of leave it in the dark. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to be because if you are, if you have so much discipline to adopt responsibility that it's easy for you to adopt group responsibility that's like in my in my opinion that happens out of nature of me trying to maximize the stat of like handling my own responsibilities Mm -hmm. and taking responsibility when it's presented yeah because it really just levels up that stat for yourself in your own game yes so that way i'm i'd never i don't really have a habit of saying like oh i don't have to do that like someone else will do that yeah yeah, yeah, i don't you lower that voice on the volume yes like he never gets to talk it, the mm-hmm. other voice that's like no i'll do it yeah. like that voice is super loud he's <laughs> off <laughs> so i just let, let him talk most of the time he gets the light yeah for real it's cool it's like picking up trash off the ground that's, yeah. that's another thing like that was a big thing i remember yeah I, that, that, that's, that's a big way i developed that kind of like i'll take extra responsibility for things that are kind of just in the gray area i was like on my walk to work back when we, when we uh used to work on the river, river walk down here in san antonio the downtown area got a nice little river walk through it beautiful place Beautiful thing. People fly from across the country. To... Yeah, that shit ain't everywhere. It's uh, nice. I wanted to appreciate it while I was there. Yeah, it, it was a nice little spot. Nice little city. Nice little downtown area. But yeah, yeah walking on my way to work, like, to work I would kind of, because with it being a downtown area, popular, or populated and popular, especially on like you know, weekend nights when you have to work, and you show up there at like 4.30, <laughs> it's like hard to find parking, or you gotta go to the parking garage and pay for parking, or find a parking lot, or whatever. Park get, far away. Get blessed up. Yes, and my Meyer solution was park far away. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> for free. And yeah. walk. <laughs> that's not, it's not I'll even walk. possible anymore, you know that? Really? Yeah, like, when I when we were working there, there was an option where you could park, I think it's a, it was about 800 meters in my opinion. But uh, Well, I guess it was 800 meters, but depending on how far down the last street you were. Like, if you had to park at that apartment a complex. A little area, yeah. A little area, like, right off, like, a main street of downtown. It's, like, a little neighborhood and a couple. Yeah, so you could either blocks. park, like, right off the main street, and then it was, like, an 800 meter on the main street. Or you could get kind of, like, screwed, and you'd have to park, like, another additional 400 meters down yeah, the block. for sure. So that would be, like, not quite a mile, but... Three quarter. Three quarters. <laughs> Three quarter. Put put your work boots on. Take like a kilometer. That's like an extra. <laughs> that's an extra quarter right there. Yeah. And uh, and I'm sorry. Just go on. I want to paint the picture. I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> on, on those walks to work, yeah, we just uh, eventually, yeah, uh, we just see this trash, and I was like, oh man, what the hell? This is my city. <laughs> I'm not even like really from here per se. But, but still, like, though, still, I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm, I guess. It is my city in the sense that like I'm here right now and I'm trying to enjoy this. I live here, I work yeah. here, and I'm trying to enjoy my walk to work. And like you're not helping that. <laughs> Get out the way. Well, yeah, I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up. Is that how you feel? Or like that's yeah. that's what happens in your head that when was you do like that? The, yeah, I think that was like the creative process behind that. Part of part of the inner working. Part of, part of me is like I think I said part of me. <laughs> <laughs> part of me. Part of me thinks that. I really like the scene. Like, I can feel it. Like, I can feel, like, the vibe. Like, if I walk in somewhere and, like, when I would be walking downtown, like, I could feel, like, the city vibe. Like, that heart of, like, I, even in my headphones, I would just hear, like, ain't no love yeah. this heart of mine. Like, it was, it just had that, like, pulse to it. And then I would pick up trash because I wanted that pulse to, like, appreciate me because I appreciated it. And I guess it's That's not like I wanted its validation. Like, I didn't want it to like me like that. Like, I just, um... I didn't want it to think I was a negative energy. Like when it looked at me, I wanted it to think like, oh, that thing helps out when it's around. Like it, it always picks up the trash around here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I like it when he's around because I like being around that place. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I fuck with that guy. Just he's to, cool. the, to the scene, <laughs> the isness of the environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, I feel like the more that I picked up trash and the more that I was like nice to people around me and just like created like 
cleaner energy in the spaces that I was in this bigger space that I was, Mm -hmm. the bigger space was like kinder to me. It like glowed for me. And it felt like the scene was prettier for me day to day. Or like my walk would be like more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And then like, it would just be like humming with me. And then uh, now when I drive around the city, like, right. Or like there was a point. Yeah. Cause I was, I would, I would be doing that. And yeah, on that walk, always have the headphones in. It's, it's a good, it's a good walk. So we got got some time to kill. I'll listen to a couple songs, listen to a podcast, whatever I was doing on the walk to work. But yeah, there'd be times where, I remember one specifically, I was listening to Jesus is King, just walking through, and it was uh, God is, and like it was on the, the first swell of like that song, where it's just like the chorus like kicks in, and like on that swell, like I was just walking through, and like a whole, like a, I don't even, not a school of, a school of fish, whatever a flock of birds are, or like whatever pigeons, whatever birds they were, whatever murder they were, or you say, <laughs> murderer crows, <laughs> whatever thing it is for them. That was hard for no reason. A little flock of birds. Go on. They, yeah, they just like swelled up like perfectly as I'm like walking, just walking in and like it, with the music, it was like, oh, <laughs> just like, oh, I just, like, it was like, this is a music video. This yeah, is, yeah, I feel that. I, felt like. I feel that like the, mm-hmm. like the sun twinkles like on beat, like there's mm-hmm. like a radiant gradient. Someone dropped something on a bass drop or something. Yeah, it like, <laughs> it's crazy. And then I'm just like, crazy synchronicity. I'm walking in pace with the beat because mm-hmm. I feel like we naturally do that, you know? And then all these things are just happening like timing rhythm. And then I work such a timing rhythm job that it's like nice to get into the rhythm of the scene before I'm like called to be into the rhythm of the scene. Mm. And then, yeah, the city was just fuck. And then also I felt like, like what I presented was like, I'm here to like turn the gears of the city. Like the tourists come here and you guys make money off the tourists. And then I keep the tourists happy so that they can come here and like p- spend money have a good experience. Have the vacation experience we're talking about. Yes. Vacation memories. Yes. That one, that one, that one place with the 60 ounce margaritas. Woo! Yeah, dude. Do you remember our server? He was fucking crazy. Or yeah, like a huge old beard. Yeah, for real. I was like, <laughs> oh yes, bro, fucking or like whatever, or your bartender, or whoever the fuck it was. Like mm-hmm. just that one like memorable experience, or the manager that came to our table and said that ridiculous thing, or whatever the fuck it was. I feel like regardless, uh, yeah. the city, when I'm when I was on the patio of like literally the river walk, it felt like the city appreciated me turning its gears. Yeah, eating your meal on the river is like, yeah, right here. People's like floating on it. Or not people floating on it like in the tube, but like on the, <laughs> on the whatever they were called, the the boats. Yeah, like... Uh, river boats. I don't know what you call this. You could dine on them as well. They had like different different variations. But yeah, it's like the whole, like the, the heartbeat of the city. Like if you it's came... Like the, the blood. <laughs> the blood's just like flowing through the city. We're just like, yes. I'm like a capillary. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> just doing a job, you know? Uh-huh. Creating the oxygen. White blood cells. So <laughs> yeah. Healing this bitch up. <laughs> yes, it was tight. And uh, the more the more I committed to like being a part of that and appreciating it for what it was, I feel like it appreciated me until it like was like so noticeable. It was so noticeable that I felt like my mornings were alive and my nights were alive. And mm-hmm. then COVID happened, and that place is not. I don't. I mean, I didn't want to work there anymore. Despite yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't. It was, it was time to move on in the, in the story. I think downtown really life anywhere is kind of hard on people. Like I, I think that's a. There's a little culture with it, I think. Yeah, it's, just, it's nitty-gritty in a lot of downtown places. And then some people, I don't think it bothers them or they even like it. But I'm just kind of sensitive to the vibe after a while. And I feel like I, I wanted to experience the different parts of what, like, San Antonio is huge, too, compared to other cities. It We're, is. It really is. Yeah. It's we, gigantic. We have, like, an hour-long radius between, like, the north side and the south side. Yeah. which is, And an hour-long radius from the east side to the west side, mm-hmm. which is pretty, that's pretty big. That's a pretty big city. That's a lot. That's a lot of coverage. So there's a lot of places to, like... You definitely don't necessarily know what it's like on 151 in Bandera if you've lived on Thousand Oaks or you don't know what Stone Oaks like if you lived on like South Cross. Mm. And so like it's cool just to. Yeah. Like within that same mileage of travel, you, you could go to a lot of different states and a lot of different countries. <laughs> Seriously. That's really that's really nice to think about. <laughs> if you like like late Texas over a whole bunch of areas of the map or I guess San Antonio. Sorry. Even San Antonio over the whole bunch of areas of the map. So yeah. You can go to a lot of different places. It, it's huge. Yeah. So, yeah, I love where I'm at now. I love where we're at now. Yeah, and I was just, like, drawn out of a comparison because, yeah, I was talking about, like, you could see the river, like, on the river walk in San Antonio. It's, like, flowing through the city. And then also, like, it's, like, the blood of the city or, like, the, the, like, the blood of the body. But also I was thinking about, because we also lived before here. Uh, in, I, I mentioned I'm not from here because I'm born in California, moved to Texas when I was around eight, seven, seven, six, like, seven to eight, somewhere in that range. And then met this guy. And that was, like, the beginning of MJ38 before we even knew MJ38. But I'm in my way over here uh, to Texas. I guess we went to Austin first. Then I forgot what I was going with that. Dang it. We used to play Mortal Kombat at my grandma's <laughs> house. <laughs> but like there were some stages that were super violent. Like mm. like body 
to dismemberment. Whole bunch of heads on spikes. <laughs> yeah, that scary kind of stuff. And we were like eight, <laughs> super seven young, or eight, as I mentioned. Very conservative grandmother doing her crosswords like uh, in the chair, in the recliner, in the living room, and we're playing this game. And she's like, "Oh, this game looks cool. It's a little fighting game." And we're like, "Yeah, huh, yeah." Huh, <laughs> yeah. Huh. But you can really see like the the fatalities <laughs> and the dismembered bodies. <laughs> 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 we would keep that on the trill. Keep that on the DL. But then, like, once you got close to, like, level 9 or level 10, you might be, like, uh, I think it might happen early in the stages, too. But just, like, the further you would go, the more likely it would be that you would pull up on a stage where it was, like, pretty gruesome. Mm-hmm. And if it was on that stage, we knew we'd get caught. It'd be, like, there's no way she doesn't. We can't fight this whole person and kill this person. <laughs> and the time it's going to take your grandma to walk over and just glance at the TV for yeah. a second. <laughs> nope. We ain't got that time. So whoever was not playing would have to, like, be ready on the on reset, the reset button button. of the Nintendo. And we'd be watching watching that thing and then sometimes be, oh, and then it would be like, like, be like good job, good yeah. job. <laughs> nice timing nice good timing job. we didn't see much I don't think you saw anything yeah. and she'd be like what What was that what happened and we'd be like we're gonna play some Spider-Man now we're good we're gonna play some play a little play hold some on Mario. we're gonna blow on this cartridge real quick yeah. <laughs> and then, okay we're good now from the top I don't think we ever got busted for that no I think we made it through every time it was hard to beat Mortal Kombat though made, oh, it, made yeah, it frustrating yeah. to play <laughs> we, were, we were young but yeah that's a uh, where I met you, and we could dive more into that later on. Yeah, but I think I, I remember now what I was talking about. Nice. I'm not from San San Antonio, as I mentioned, and uh, I lived in San Marcos as well. But yes, from California to Texas, met him, and then we moved. We both moved around a lot, but stayed in contact. Ended up going to college in San Marcos, and also in that city, there's also a river flowing through it, <laughs> right on through it. It's crazy. I was like, that. That's a weird. It's a weird thing with me. Motif that's followed you. Yeah. What other cities have? Rivers that run through it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's Google that. Big cities with rivers running through them. Because I'm pretty sure whenever I was touring, uh, I mentioned going to college in Texas State or San Marcos, which is Texas State, Southwest Texas for some of the older folk. Sorry to say that. But I can't believe you just called them all. Texas State. <laughs> Texas State's where we were. Bobcats, baby. Eat them up, eat them up. Go yes, cats, and go. on that tour or during the NSO, new, sort, new student orientation, or maybe, I don't even remember, maybe touring it, whatever. Somewhere in that early process, uh, there's like, this is one of the selling, maybe not selling points, but one of the points they like to mention while you're like walking through Sewell and like Bikini Hill. And like, yeah. like this is one of the, or I think this is, this is the only campus yeah. in the United States with a river, river running. running through it. Yep. So I'm not sure how many cities have rivers, but San Antonio and San Marcos definitely do. And I lived in both of them. That's cool. That's really cool. Let me check Cities it out. that start with S that have a, that are two <laughs> words that have a river running through them. Yeah. You might be 100%. 100%. I wonder what that's a metaphor for. Maybe you I just keep know. keep the energy flowing. Maybe that's part of your role. I think we might all be a body. In the analogy I was like alluding to, like it's the blood. You know, this might all be a body. Like Earth is like a body. Yeah, and we're all just cells or whatever. Could be. Who knows? Probably are. Some shit. Probably literally are. I remember like thinking about our uh, you know, the Earth is whatever, like seventy whatever percent or eighty percent water, whatever like we are of water, the same ratio or something very similar. Oh, that's an interesting fact. It feels like everything's a paradox of as above as below. Mm, maybe it's not. Maybe it was the only. Call. I think this is saying, like, oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Rivers run through cities all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, for sure, right? Okay. Either way, it's cool that I live in two of them. Yeah. And to, to be that. literally right there, that's the other thing is that, like, you would walk by the river in San Marcos and, would, like, yeah, work right next to the I river right in San Antonio. There, and I would, like, float the river in San, <laughs> San Marcos. Yeah. Yeah, New Braunfels has a river. Mm hmm. Well, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Austin has a river. I'm sure we're gonna run it through there somewhere. It's never was got rivers running through it. Yeah, the blood of the city, uh, the, uh, the veins. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it makes more sense that a whole bunch of cities would have it. Working in downtown it definitely is a good metaphor, especially because if tourism drives like a lot of the economy of the city, uh-huh. we definitely were like a part of the gear that turned tourism, which is the lifeblood of the city, allegedly. Mm-hmm. So yes, 100 percent to the max. Crazy. Someone's gotta do it. Yeah, it felt good to be me. I was like, I'll pick up this. Making all the part or making all the music that they party to. Yeah. Someone's got to host the the party. Someone, the restaurant's got to be open for people to come in and eat. And the bar's got to be open for people to come in and drink. And the club's got to be open for people to come in and dance and do the shit. Yeah. And it reminds me of the, gotta host the, the glass the shop dance. and the alchemist. I feel like if you have a dream, then you're going to have to like learn to work for somebody else. It's just like the nature of the beast. Mm. And then I like the food service industry because we get to help people like the vibe. It's like help people have a, a good experience, like give someone a smile. You good know time. what I'm saying? A good time, a memory, a, ch- a chuckle. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of times. Have, did you ever go out and not have a good time somewhere when you were a kid? 
Um, I'm sure I have. Right. Like, insofar as, like, the food maybe wasn't good or, like, the service was ass. But, like, I never had, like, a memorably, like, oh, I'm stained by this one. <laughs> me neither. This one time they me got neither. me. Maybe what it is for me is my family was just always fighting when we went out to eat. And I'm like, if there was just some charismatic waiter that was all like, hey, guys, what the fuck? Chill out. What do you want? So I'm like, alcohol. Hey, come down there. <laughs> yeah. Buddy, you want a drink? <laughs> What's up? What's wrong? What's Who are we celebrating? On? Ma'am, you're worth celebrating. That how dress was, is amazing. How was the last year of your life? <laughs> Tell me about it. Let's project the future year. No, but like, I don't know. I think that's part of what goes into it. Like, that would happen? Or like, he would break up the, the moment? Or like, help try to bring into the right vibe? I don't know. A more enjoyable vibe? I think what, like, th- those, it's like those pieces of information float, but then what like happens in my brain is like, I just want to create like the most comfortable waters you could possibly imagine. Like, yeah. give, like, the best opportunity for people to, like, have the best time. Because I can't do much at the end of the day. But what I can do is, like, <laughs> like I can't help it if you guys... As, far as being a server? Yeah. Like, yeah. If, if you have a, a feud with your brother that's ongoing for, like, a decade, like, I can't, like, I can't give you therapy. It's just coming table. to a head right now yeah. at this dinner. <laughs> I, I, I'm probably not gonna, going to address it now where I work now. At Saltgrass, uh, maybe. But <laughs> we'll have to edit that out. <laughs> I'll play it. But but what I can do is give an opportunity, like put a best foot forward. So it's like, oh, this is really nice, actually. Like this, this maybe, maybe like you can put it. I don't know. I think sometimes people are looking for stressors. You're looking for an opportunity to get mad. So I love giving someone no opportunities to get mad. They're like, God damn it. Every single one of my expectations was met. What am I supposed to do other than sit here and have a good time? Yeah. Who would I be if I wasn't having a good time right now? Mm-hmm. And I'm like. Would you like another drink, sir? Maybe we should wrestle with that <laughs> more over the bourbon. <laughs> yeah. That's really that's a kind of what plays into my mind sometimes. Is like I want to give I want to give the the opportunity for all of all of your expectations to be met, so you can just be happy. Yes. Yeah. If you're able to, yeah, to uh, to keep that at a check or keep that homeostasis met of all the things that I ordered are coming to me in like a timely manner, mm-hmm. and I'm not he's not forgetting shit, and like my water's not running out. And there's like there's like a trust there. You feel like oh he's mm-hmm. got my best interest at heart. Like he, I don't have to worry about that shit. He's taking care of it. Yeah, it's all we're good. literally paying someone to take care of that shit. For me. It's, all, it's all good. And he's got that. So if you can like oh yeah occupy that and keep that the the runner the runners that you're having a good time. Like, yes. And then like there's no chaotic fluctuations of like oh shit like this this thing took way 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 longer than it should have or like there was a yeah. mix up in the kitchen and this thing like accidents happen people drop stuff that Pe- can become the runner things. of what happened right there. Yeah. People suck, huh? Yeah, people do suck. You suck. Oh, y'all suck here, huh? Okay, y'all is cool with sucking. I'm used to okay. people sucking in my I'm life. I'm paying for you to suck. <laughs> it gets tough. Yeah. I can I can see how that could spiral out of control really yeah, quickly. Yeah, so if you're able to keep it all at a nice homeostasis, a home of every ex- expectation is being met. And like in that place, a great, that's like the precursor for a great time to happen at a restaurant. Right. For sure. Yeah. You still have a great time if things don't happen, if you're able to like be strong enough, or like strong-willed enough to be like... No, they spilled a drink on me. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I ordered. Bless those people. Medium rare steak, you. and you gave me well done chicken, and I I'm gonna eat it. Because I'm gonna Why eat it. Say a damn thing. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing me anything. I, I forget who that guy was. I, want to I don't know, but that's out. one of my favorite vines. Little, yeah, that's something on Instagram. He's like, yeah. If, if you're complaining about that kind of stuff, you're looking for something to be mad about. I think. More or less, I think is what he was trying to allude to. But like, I, I'm not. I'm also not saying like to be okay with people fucking up. When I agree with that statement, like we should hold. I'm. I fucking care about discipline. Like, yeah, we got standards here. Yeah, I fucking care about discipline. I got values. A hundred percent. Like I actually care. Like I'm not just saying I care. I give a shit. <laughs> I work on it in my own time when I'm alone. Mm. But I lost yes. myself. <laughs> oh, we were talking about. <laughs> Working in the dang thing, doing the dang thing at the tables, making sure the homeostasis is met so that the good time could happen. And if you're not doing that, it's kind of fudging. But uh, that guy's attitude about I'll eat ass. the well done chicken yes. is like, I'm, I'm that guy too. Like, I don't want. It's a balance. I don't want a bad time. Like, I've been in too many bad times where people got upset about little things. And I love being like, here, oh, that's a little thing. So everybody's like, oh, fuck. I'll make it a little thing right now. Watch. He's like, you... I, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> I don't... Watch, watch, watch. Okay. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Oh, I was so stressed about that. Yes. And it's that, like, oh, here's that drink that <laughs> took the 45 minutes because like, I totally forgot. Oh, you're fine. No, no right. Doc, you're good. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I love being able to do that. Yeah. Like, the power the to power. do that is, yeah, it's, it's enjoyable to head. use. For real. The relief versus like the anxiety. Yes. 30 seconds prior. Yes. Also, like, uh, maybe it's because like uh, my dad would get a little stressed out sometimes when I was like a kid. So, like, everybody would be stressed out that my dad was stressed out. 
So, like, I also realized that if you don't get stressed out, sometimes it just relieves, like, everybody else, too. It's like, you can the be whole, like... Yeah, the whole environment, the whole table. Yeah. They're like, oh, shit, okay, it's cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're back to whatever, <laughs> whatever this is. <laughs> whatever this freedom of enjoying this moment is that you get back to whenever the stressful moment's over, uh, you know? Yeah, okay, we're chilling again. Nice. Yeah, back at homeostasis. Okay, and it's but, like, these waters are so warm. I love this restaurant. This mm-hmm. restaurant's so tight. This was such a fun place to just be, to, to sit in my fucking meat suit. <laughs> it's, like, it's like what we're doing Skeletons meet to exist in this, this energy field that we've created yeah, in these temples muscle, that we built ligament fucking sack yeah to me or whenever i'm on the uh what do we call them the super mega multivitamins yes whenever i'm on those i feel like i'm just like a soul soup like i feel like <laughs> <laughs> melted bro yeah, i'm like a cup of like like it's imagine a cup fresh and, cup of matthew <laughs> <laughs> And there's like uh there's like two eyeballs on the top, but it's like <laughs> like but it's one soul. That's what it is. It's just like uh-huh. my soul's like been inverted backwards. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. there's the shell it normally sits in, and I'm just a warm cup of Matthew. <laughs> and then and then you just want to sit for me. I just want to like sit there with the other steaming cups of my friends, mm. and then talk in like the the space that we're sharing able together. To talk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm able to hear you. You're able to yeah. We we can like kind of draw things on the board together of like what is our perception yeah, of what's going on in this thing that we're all doing here. You're here, right? I'm here. We're both here. What's going on? <laughs> and then I feel like because we're perceiving it together, like whatever you're seeing in your head and whatever I'm seeing in my head, it's like connected in a way that we can understand each other. If we're able to do it correctly. Yeah, because I've also been on correctly. super mega multivitamins with my sister one time. Mm-hmm. And it was like I felt the opposite of that. I was like, oh, I think what's going on here is like the picture, the pictures that are being shown to you through the language that I'm saying and the pictures that are shown to me through the language that I'm saying – like are off sync like a radio station like you're on 93.3 and i'm on like 106.5 and and we can't even like communicating with each other is just pointless right now and that like spooked me i was like whoa this is scary what if i got stuck like this oh (laughs) (laughs) this is like static or not not static but uh yeah offsetting frequencies yeah that weren't i guess cohesive and i I, yeah i guess normally in a conversation we're just like here with each other we just like feel each other's energy we're like on the same page you and i but Especially yeah. super on the same page you all and the I, time. Yeah, for sure. But not everybody you meet or every everybody you have a, share a conversation with is going to be on the same page about the same thing y'all are talking about. That's true. That, I could have been just been feeling that thing. And mm-hmm. then I felt what it, what it feels like when you're talking about the same thing with somebody, but you're on different pages about it. Uh-huh. It's like scary how much you're not talking about the same thing. The the, like, the the true reality of the miscommunication that's going on. Yeah, I was like... Or like the, no, like the non-communication. This like, is, oh my God. <laughs> this is literally pointless. <laughs> it's like I'm saying blah, 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 blah. <laughs> But, <laughs> yes. Why would we do any of that for any yes. duration of time? <laughs> I was like, I, I then I, I like was like, I'm gonna go like be alone for a little bit just so I can think about this. And in that space, I was like, What's going on with this fucking? Just trying to like move, 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 get my frequency like back to a radio station <laughs> so I could be like on the same page as somebody. But I think I just struggled to conceptualize because I got scared that like if just what you're saying, even like any kind There's of a truth in that, yeah. Maybe you're talking about COVID, but like what someone else perceives COVID to be and what you yeah. perceive to be COVID to be yeah. might be so different that what you're talking about like is intranslatable to each other. Like Virtually different languages. Yeah, you're not scared and obviously you shouldn't be scared. And they're petrified and obviously they should be petrified based on your own perception points. Mm-hmm. Like you're both idiots to each other and neither of you are wrong. Two ends of the spectrum. Because you're not, neither of you all are on the, or maybe maybe someone's wrong. Maybe some, one of you is right and one of you is wrong. Mm. But, like, the, the conversation you're going to have about it isn't, like, based in any way you could, like, help each other with that. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a somewhat scary thought. But I think, yeah, there's a, just that truth in that. There can be that miscommunication. Even if you're watching the same thing, talking about the same thing. We all live in the same, exist in the same thing. But it can be so radically different just based on, yeah, all your... All your values, where where your where your head's at, your framing your of what's happening. Yeah, how do you yeah how do you perceive what's going on here? Because I th- I could ask anyone the question. It's like what's going on. <laughs> ask anyone that question, and it's like that question can be answered <laughs> on so many levels that it's like uh, impossible to go through all of it. Because it's like what's going on. Well, me and my boy are uh, recording a podcast. We're chilling. We're sitting in some chairs. The fans going. Uh, cars are driving by. People are living. People are existing. I ate a couple minutes ago or like an hour or so ago now, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, okay, well, what's going on? Well, like the, the, the world's rotating in this <laughs> like black space with a whole bunch of stars flying through it and asteroids just yeah, big. And we're just this big fireball in the sky that we're just like, Wah! 
and it's like flying on. We're going really quick and we're spinning real fast too. And we're like tilting on it. You know, <laughs> we're like leaning on this bitch and we're <laughs> breathing <laughs> oxygen made by the trees. That's all going on. That right? live through the oxygen, the carbon that we make. Like that those shit's are, fucking crazy. Those are facts. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what's going on here. That's what's going on. We're all living this weird humanoid life. But also, like it, it could go beyond that. Like, what do I, how do you, where, where do you think the future comes from? Where do you think dreams, what do you think dreams are? Where, like, what do you, where do we go when we die? Like, <laughs> what's going on here? What's going on in that aspect? <laughs> so it can go to like, there's a lot. There's a lot of so everyone has a different interpretation of what's going on, and you're living in your interpretation of what's going on. I feel that when someone asks me how was my day, I'm just like through what frame of reference? I'm fucking alive. It was a day. <laughs> it was about mm, I don't know, 18 hours or so. About this point, I'm gonna sleep in a little bit. Yeah. It was a day. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just I'll like do it again tomorrow on the red line. Like you could, I'm sure you could see it in my eyes, you know. But like, oh, this guy's tired. I'm blessed though. Like we're, oh, I'm alive. Like. And I checked three boxes today, and I Woke only up lined up three boxes. I did all of them, so like, I'm I'm good. What's the frame of reference? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I am tired most of the time, especially just like in the middle of the shit. This is kind of what I'm talking about. This question will be presented, and then I'll catch myself off guard. It's like, oh wait, I'm like great. Like I went to the gym. Um, I'm, my, I'm super healthy right now. Like uh, everything's going. Well. I got all my meals in. I yeah. drank some water today. I'm feeling good. I took my multivitamin. Yeah, come on, yo. Like we're we're doing all right. It's a good day. That's another thing about the perspective of like, what's your perspective of what's going on? So what do you yes, identify yes, as what's yes. going on? Mm-hmm. And then what's your perspective about what's going yes. on? What do you think's going on? And how do you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> and then like... The, and that's your that's your existence. Th- that's kind of your... Yeah, that's your it framework. you. It exactly, frame, yeah. yeah. And then... But your framework kind of is your existence. It's More your, or less. <laughs> that's the problem. Except for the result part that some... God, things happen. That's Sometimes why you, you learn things about stuff. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to bring it back to. Your okay. framework <laughs> needs to align with truth. If your framework doesn't align with truth, then you're uh, going to have to learn things about stuff constantly. There you go. And it's going to suck, If you don't dude. learn the things about the stuff before, you have to learn the things about the stuff in that way, Oof. you will. Yeah. You your hopefully, frame, if your frame has to be broken, it, it'll, it'll come back together. But if you like, if you can keep it from breaking before the thing would happen, that it wouldn't break it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That'd if be learn, super If valuable. you learn the thing, it's about the stuff before the stuff hits the fan. Yeah. I always uh, feel that. It's preparing like for the flood. You ideally. get a lot of you know what I'm opportunities to learn the lesson before you learn the hard way. Yes. I felt that when I've like rolled my ankles or like broken my ankles. It Ooh. was like, there was Ooh. a lot of like. How op- many times have you broken a bone? Uh, I broke my ankle twice. Ugh. Yes, that's a bad injury. It's like three months to get better from that. Ugh. And then you have to like start working out when you didn't work out for three months. And you like, you, you, you see how much you take for granted the walking. Yeah. Just, just the existing that happens. Yeah. Like, you, this is crazy, y'all. <laughs> when you're, you just walk. Dude, there's so much more energy in a crutching around and like also just walking out the door. Three seconds to walk out the door from your desk chair right boop, now. Boop, 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 boop. I'm gone. <laughs> But no, like for me to walk out the door back, you got to put the boot on and then you got to like get get the crutches and then like (laughs) kind of open up the door, which is kind of hard because you have to be, you're far away from it or like open it and take a step back and then like open it with the crutch way more than you think, right? Mm -hmm. Don't think about it. You You wouldn't even think about it. But it's a blessing. That's like the part of the mask like we had referred, we've been referring to like you mask the complexity. It's like, oh shit. I take for granted like the ability to just walk with Dude, a I had this, broken ankle. <laughs> okay, I had this theory the other night. I was thinking about this. Sometimes I think God puts us in jail. <laughs> Straight to jail. Seriously, you get a go to jail card for mm-hmm. like a season of life because you Damn were. It. <laughs> like, you had too much hubris, sir. I'm so sorry. You and you, you were flew too close to the sun. Yeah, or whatever. Whatever. For me, it was like uh, I f- had newfound as- athleticism, and then like was. I don't know. Like I get to playing basketball behind the wrong energy sometimes. I'll mm-hmm. get but I'll get to playing behind fuck you energy for too long, and then it's like, uh, I break my ankle and you're out for ah. like three months, and it's like I was the fastest I've ever been. And mm-hmm. when I got to that feeling of like I am so fast, I could talk so much shit. I could talk. Th- these people don't fucking know. And then you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to show them though. Yeah, you for real. Today. And then, like, you, I would get put in, like, season jail. It's like, you didn't handle that blessing well. So we're going to, like, to, or, like, if you get grounded. Like, if have uh-huh. you, you know yeah, what I'm there saying? There you go. There you go. Yeah, like that. That might be, like, a better way to frame this thing. Similar, same metaphor. Yeah. Or, like, uh, have you ever lost your car? Like, you were, I, I think I've, I've, like, wrecked a car, and I didn't have a car for, like, four or five months. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then you can't, like, you, th- then you find out how much you take for granted having a car. Yeah. And then you have to go through seasons of like recovery of this part of your personality that drove you to like abusing your blessings mm-hmm. and then overcome that thing and then go back to like homeos- your blessings. homeostasis rise. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I feel like that happens more in adolescence, in my opinion. Like, I feel like at this point in my life, I have, I've kind of conquered those things for the most part where, like, you aren't going to th- – the things you would get grounded for. Because I'm not – like, you put an end to childish ways at some point, you know? And uh, I think yeah, the, the idea of maturation and growing up is, like – I guess that that's kind of how you measure it. Or, like, I guess people have experienced that thing, and they're like, oh, I'm, like, I'm different than I was. And then people are like, what is that thing? You've experienced that thing? Yeah. Let's call it maturation. Yeah. That, <laughs> right? Like, I don't want to... Being more mature. I don't want to spend my money on that anymore. It's not a good use of money. I, I understand why you think it's a good use of money, but, like, here's why I don't think it's a good use of money. And I'm pretty sure I'm right. But it's because, like, perspective changes from maturation, you know? Yeah. Definitely a real thing. Super real. So, but then flipping it back onto what you had just brought up just now that I think you get several opportunities to like learn the lesson before you have to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. Like you get that feeling of like that thing didn't feel right. Learn the things about the stuff. Yeah. And then maybe you see a video of somebody embodying the energy that you identified as like, maybe I don't want to see that in me. Then you see it in someone else and you're like, movie or something and they lose. Yes. Oh shit. If I keep in, if I keep doing that, Okay, shit. <laughs> yeah, it'll life will, in my opinion, life tries to tell you, like, warning, warning, like, yeah. please change your oil, please change your oil. Mm. And then you can, like, earnestly repent of your sins, is how I describe it. But, like, um, there you go. yeah, like, come to, come to actual, like, sense of, like, I don't want to be that way. Like, I was that way. Maybe I don't know why. Maybe I'm not sure how I'm going to fix it, but, like, I, I just don't want to be that way. Like, that, I think that's enough to mm. not have to have your shit flooded or your frame broken. Yeah. And I felt that like numerous times in life where I've identified it and I'm like, okay, you know that feeling of like, hey, don't 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 be like that or like bad shit's going to eventually happen from th- yeah. there will be a hole in this thing don't you're building. That energy. Yeah. That's how you'll get to to hell or like your own <laughs> your own personal hell is for you. It sucks for you. <laughs> Specifically tailored. <laughs> your hell. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, Jordan Peterson talks about that too because he talks about the idea of Trying to create, yeah, like you have your framework and like you have to get the, I guess, aim it, aim it upwards at like, at like the best possible frame you could ever possibly imagine for yourself and like the highest high of, of everything. I just like actually watched a video of J. Cole talking about that. He's like, have like, like the most wildest outlandish dreams. Like, like I want to go to the NBA. He's like, no, no, no. Like, well, there's a lot of players in the NBA. There's one guy that rides the bench and there's one guy that's LeBron James. Yeah. Who do you want to be like specifically? And yeah. like, yeah, aim that shit super, super high. And uh, also, that's like your heaven, ideally. For you, it's your heaven. It's your awesome. Yeah. <laughs> For specifically. And like, what, yeah. For your that, uniqueness, because there's no limit to the amount of uniqueness in the world. Yeah. All I can do is ask you to, to try to imagine that and maybe try to help influence you in that and aid you in that process. But like, you have to come up with that vision. I can't do it for you. I can't that's true. drink the water. And it is within you, in my opinion. Like, mm-hmm. what would I like to do? How would I like to spend my time? Yes. If you how could spend it perfectly. Yeah. How, how would I construct my day? What's the thing you like to do the most? Mm-hmm. And what then am I good at? At a metaphysical how can I level. I help people? There we go. That's another thing. What am I good at? What can I help? Or how can I help people with it? How can I get paid for that? Yeah, there's that chart. It's a good little right. it's a good little thing to try to throw into your matrix. For sure. Because helping other people with it. We're social creatures. It feels important, right? It feels, it, it feels like if you're helping with other people, maybe the universe will help you. We're all in this bitch together. We're Team Milky Way, baby. <laughs> Team Milky Way, baby. <laughs> what's, a, what's a, I want like a candy bar T-shirt. It's just like the, the t- Team Milky Way uni. Yeah, I was thinking about that and like my fall off into my like right before you go to sleep, that, that, that sweet spot. I was just thinking about because I remember having this realization in high school of like I have people in my locker room who I, I went to high school in like Austin and uh, I'm from California. So I'm a Lakers fan. And I have people in my locker room that are like some uh, like Texas or I guess we're like Spurs fans. Uh, Rockets, Mavericks, Mavs, but mostly it was like uh, some LeBron fans and Boston Celtics fans in like my high school basketball locker room. Gotcha. And I remember thinking like, uh, yeah, we'd be like talking shit to each other about like these <laughs> about the games and who's winning because yeah, at that time it was like Boston and LA were like going like yeah, when I'm in like my later years of high school, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, like all that time like was Lakers and Celtics were like good again and like they were going at it and I was like yes, this is tight, this is dope. The Lakers made a run in the to like 2000, 2001, 2002, they made a run. And then I was in high school, yeah, and I was able to enjoy it so much, so much. And like I would see that, yeah, we, but we were talking shit to each other. And like because the Celtics were good, they ended up winning in 2008. So like me and this one particular person, like, yeah, we'd be talking shit to each other. But yeah. I was like, this is, why are we kind of like, we're the same, we're literally on the same team. And I was like, this is kind of like, if even if like our, our high school, I like scoped out a little bit. I was like, okay, well, if our high school is like playing against like crosstown rivalries, like it's like, fuck. Let's go fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this dub on these motherfuckers. Yeah. And like, that's 
crosstown rivalries are very common in Texas for all kinds of football, especially. Of course, of course. Of course. Very, very common thing. Friday Night Lights is kind of like that. Fuck Built Lago on that, Vista. Right? Still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got... Dude, <laughs> fuck, then they don't get out of the playoffs, you bro. You guys know. Took that shit personally. You, you guys scrape the gym with your cleats, you bastards. Oh, yeah, it goes back, was, dog. It, it, gets it goes respectful. It goes Why? back. Why? We're in the same city. It's like if we're, we're probably rooting for the same NBA teams. And if not, we definitely root for the same Olympic team. And if not, then we, we would definitely root for Team Earth. <laughs> We'd be Team Ga- like Milky Way, for sure. Like Against who? Like... <laughs> Fuck them though. <laughs> <laughs> Slaps floor aggressively. The aliens are like, yeah. you're not too Milky Way. Oh, no, no, no. Start a war chat. <laughs> where, where do you draw that line? I was like, that's so that's so strange. Dude, I don't know if we win alien warfare. We might just scope larger than that. It's like frame. Who knows how, how, how far it goes? But yeah, we all exist. We're all in this bitch together. We're all team existence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is like that. There's You're not competing with anybody. Mm-hmm. I guess you, you do compete for resource. You compete in selection. There's healthy competition for sure. Yeah. Push me to be better. Let's go. And there just is real competition in the job space. There's competition. Res- yeah, resources. In the mating space. This competition, like, does exist. For sure. And that's why we should have friendly competition. So that we can, like, be good at competing. So that it's not like a tooth and nail thing all the time. It freaks us out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes us better at the game. Competing. I think. Yeah, the tough thing to swallow about that is, like, that's two sides to that coin. Like we are, we are. Un, I do. I love because it's like we are all on the same team, mm-hmm. but we do. Nature says we have to compete with each other for resource, but maybe we're just past that point as people. Like we really can just like put that on its head. I think so we're. Create, I think we're getting there for sure. Yeah, we're trying to right. Shit. Yeah. Create economic like green resources, electronic cars, fucking. Yeah, the ability to yeah have no world hunger, like enough food for everyone. Yeah, all that kind of shit. That's fine. Yeah, I think we're getting there. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. we're on the same team. What that. the hell? Yeah, yeah for sure. I think <laughs> about that. that, especially on the the super multi mega vitamins. I just uh, feel that. It's oh like, yeah. You we're I'm you you're me. You're just like bloop. We're the same thing. We're all everything. Where do I stop and start? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all the light. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then from that perspective, it's hard to. Okay, so the problem, another problem that arises is there's there's other people that make it difficult for groups of people to coexist with ease. Create like oh, there are definitely assholes out there. <laughs> there are definitely some big old stinky assholes out there. For sure, facts. That don't, yeah, that can't. I'm like, we're all on the same team. Fuck you. Yeah. Took my parking spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that exists for sure. Having a bad day. So then you, you, but you're wearing Team Milky Way. It's just like, dog, I rep. Team me. I rep you, bitch. <laughs> I rep us. <laughs> Why do you hate me? <laughs> That's, that, that feeling exists. And then it's hard to be like, well, I guess well, you'll come around. You'll come around. They know not what they do. Yeah, that's what it is, right? Be more Christ-like. It's a big ask. It's the biggest ask. But I think it's typically the right thing. The, the cliche of what would Jesus do? It's like, ah, oh, that's probably the right answer. As cliche as it sounds. Literally the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah it's just... crazy, yeah, because you, you could ask that question, and that question means, yeah, what's, like, what, what, what's the right thing to do here? Yeah. From a perspective of, like, love, and what's the best... Like, Sometimes it's really hard to tell. To put your ego aside, like, what would your? I guess the question is kind of like, what would your absolute role model? What would the perfect person do? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's how they're kind of trying to frame that with that question. But I think that helps. It helps yeah. a lot because yeah. then What's you the can ideal? detach. The ideal behavior? Yeah, like, well, the perfect person would fucking say, "I'm sorry." I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they take responsibility, huh? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> they try to bridge that gap. <laughs> it's like or they forgive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whatever. They they they'd let go. They mm-hmm. they'd say fine and like it's okay. I'm not I'm not mad at you anymore. It's like, oh, I ain't tripping. It's yeah, all right. it's all right. <laughs> For sure. That's and it's nice to be able to identify that outside of yourself by asking yourself, what would Jesus do? Mm-hmm. Take that momentary thought of like, you know, like moving out of the you're in the matrix, just going, 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 and then it's like all the reactions are happening. <laughs> and then it's like the ability to be like, hold on, pause it all. <laughs> Like you zoom out into like the, the mind, the thought space, the mind space. And you're like, okay, let me analyze it from here for a what, second. What would a smart person do? <laughs> <laughs> if I were a smart person. How would a genius act? How would I do that? I could, and then you can figure out what to do. I mm. thought about that today. I was like. I think meditating helps a lot get there. I it should. Helps that process. What were you saying? You felt cold today? Well, I think the because the answers lie within you. Like you kind of yeah. you know what you should do, and you know where your bullshit is. You ask and think about it long enough. Yeah. So that's why meditating is nice because you calm down all the voices that are kind of distracting, that yeah, clouding it up builds that, that muscle. Knowing. Yeah, it builds the muscle of the ability, or the, metaphorically, that muscle of the ability to yeah, to kind of zoom out into that thought space and like detach from the emotion or from the the code that you're being sent. 
and being like, I understand I'm being sent this code. I'm sure it's valid. It has and there's reasons it's being is being sent to me, but I could like stop it and like not allow it to enter the whatever yeah. the action chain <laughs> yeah i'm like at the gates of my soul it's like what's going on over there wait hold on hold on what, let, me see, let me see some id let me see some id identification put them up uh, i <laughs> i fucking i my car back is, in the line oh, come kid. on dog like i'm i'm with dave uh, fuck dave and you <laughs> <laughs> dave <laughs> let's get out of here bro wait Chappelle? yes that's what i'm talking about no, no way. Get the fuck out of he's not with you me. pussy he ain't with you i know his entourage <laughs> <laughs> that's something that's from Joe Rogan. Shane Gillis was talking about he was with somebody. And what? No way. <laughs> they went to the club and they went. To, he's like, I'm with Dave, and they're like, No, you're not. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Doubt it. He's like, I really am like looking for him, but like trying to find him. I can't find him. Just, 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 just ask him. Just ask him. He does for me. <laughs> he's like, yeah, right. Joe was like, How many people every night are like, I'm with Dave? You think? Gonna, right. <laughs> he's like a lot. More than zero. Way more than zero. It's probably up into the well, percentage wise. Two percent of the entire crowd <laughs> was worth of people, maybe one percent. I'm with I'm with Dave. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> just banking, just banking. You're not with Dave. Kobe. I'm on Dave's tab. No, no, oh, damn it. Dude, the that comedy happened. mothership in Austin, though. Big shout yeah, out. Yeah, that's tight. That's tight. Yeah, we're in San Antonio in Texas, as we mentioned. Shout out HEB. Shout out Austin, Texas. That's where I came in and my high school setting was at. That I kind of was alluding to earlier, and that is now where Joe Rogan is residing. That's kind of crazy, Wallen. Do I need to get the door? Oh, I think I need to get the door for a second. Let me uh, edit this out. We'll be right back. Part two. <laughs> and we're back from our commercial break from our sponsor that doesn't exist. When opportunity knocks, Justin's going to answer the door. door. I'll Facts. run to that door. I'll break my ankle to get to that door. <laughs> He'll hole. stop the pod and Stop. crawl. <laughs> <laughs> I will make it happen. Papa. Papa. What were we talking about? Can you remember what we were just on? Because I cannot. All the bullshit. We could just... <laughs> We can just kick around a new can. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We were talking about fucking yeah, being, being better people and shit. I got a new thing going on here. I saw this on Instagram today, just scrolling through. Maybe on uh, World Star, someone reported it. But uh, I think I saw something about Justin Roiland, the guy who co writes or writes. Oh, shit. Of, I don't know shit about that. Of Rick and Morty. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was in some allegations Hi. For, for some ish. That's my little beautiful baby boo over there. And he was in some allegations for some ish. <laughs> It's a boo lib. It's a boo lib. <laughs> boo. <laughs> but yeah, I love Rick and Morty. I don't know if it. That show's great. How, how much Let's preface that. Yeah. Well, I think there's a season available not on HBO. No, I think I watched that too. I don't know. There might be one available or not. Or yeah, I'm not on uh, HBO. But I've yeah. seen five Rick seasons. I'm pretty sure. Rick and Morty's dope. I love that show. And that was like a. There was. I don't know. That show kind of hit me in stride at like a point in my life where it was I was like most susceptible to the idea that like. All of this shit's kind of weird, and like, like, like how we're kind of like talking about abstract, con- abstract concepts. Like, once you get past, like, what do you think's going on here, and like, you could break break it down way past whatever's going on, actually physically in front of you. Yeah, and like, Rick and Morty kind of plays on those ideas a little bit. It kind yeah. of it dives into that realm and brings up some of those premises and some of the ideas of like, maybe this is all a simulation, or maybe this is all like, there's infinite amount of universes. That's, that's one of the premises of the show, if you've never seen it. Yeah. Is that there's infinite amount of universes. He's like, Morty, there's infinite amount of you, Morty. Shut up. Like, <laughs> I don't need you. We're going to go to I another timeline you. where we did, or where, where we died, and we're going to live those lives. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Shut up, Morty. Yeah, they use it as a plot point to do a lot of things. Like, if they want to go to a universe that they're all bees, it's like, that exists. They go to a universe where, like, Morty's super lucky. They can just go to that universe and see what his life would be like. So they use it to get in and out of trouble. Yeah, and the premise of, yeah, there's multiple uh, multiverse. But what that does is it, it, it plays in the space of, like, pulling back the walls on the constraints of what we think the structure of reality is. Mm-hmm. But it does it in a plausible enough way. Also, it brings up, like, a lot of the arbitrary nature of life yeah. in such, like, a plausible way that Fine. it kind of just, Satire. like, makes you think, like... Okay, maybe anything could be going on. Maybe all of my preconceptions are just fucking preconceptions that I was fucking preconcepting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. like, and then you, and then you're in that space. I think part of what makes you want to communicate, and this is just opinion, but like that, it hits you in stride in a time when you were able to like take away some preconceptions. Was, my, yeah, my, my conceptions, my framework is a little bit more malleable than it was. Let's say I watched it two years earlier than when I watched it. It would have been. It would have hit differently. Right. I would not have seen it the way I saw it when it hit me in stride, and I was malleable to it. I was like, "Ooh, I think, yeah, like I, I do kind of think like that." Or like maybe that kind of gave some validity to like those ideas aren't 
so out of the box that no one else is thinking about them. Like, pe- other people are thinking about this kind of shit, too. Yeah. And maybe there is some truth in it. And, like, it's a successful show. So maybe, like, it's, you know, it's, the winners are... It's, like we it's talked about popular. in the beginning. It's like a cult following. Yeah. It's, but, it's one of yeah, the biggest shows in America. Show. Rick and Morty, if you've never seen it, give it a couple <clears throat> shots. There's a couple episodes, maybe, that you might want to highlight. Maybe just look up the best Rick and Morty episodes. Watch, yeah. like, two or three of those. There's, Get a good little... Because there is, like, some continuity and, like, they're a, a runner in the story. And, like, there is, like, if you watch season four and you've never seen any of it before, like, there's some context that you'll miss. That of like things that they kind of referred to that happened in earlier. It's probably seasons like or one whatever. or two. It, it's not. It's small. It's it's minuscule. You can watch any episode and be like taken by the abstract ideas and just let it be. Yeah, it's made to be digestible like that. Definitely when you're taken by. And this. I think part of the the things that helped us with in that framework was to not be so attached to working like a nine to five job or like a job you would get with a college degree, mm-hmm. and that maybe it was okay for us to like develop this craft of making music and being podcasters and stuff like that on the side of having a hustle that facilitated that and like living that as our fucking life, like being able to wear that as an identity. And yeah. and I think that got easier because Rick and Morty does kind of exploit the arbitrary nature of a lot of the preconceptions that people have of what is a good job, what's a bad job, what's a good existence, and what's a bad existence. And mm-hmm. like what, what real happiness is and what real yeah. suffering is and what, what those different things can look like, what, what true freedom is. And I think that was part of what made that show so tight is because we were stepping away from the framework of like what normalcy was during the time when we kind of adopted that show. Yes, I, and I, then, I, I would agree. And Rick was just like, fuck all that shit anyways, dog. Fuck like, normal shit. Yeah, that shit sucks, dog. Don't you agree? <laughs> and I was like, I do agree. Fuck. It's nice to have that like validating voice. Yeah. But he's also like a crazy drunk. And I understand that like dichotomy of like... uh, Super you, genius. Yeah, you can be driven mad by the... Arbitrary nature of things. And the limitless potential of all things. Yeah. Like you, anything could happen and nothing could happen all at once at any given moment. If you don't act perfectly, your life won't happen. It's like over... It could make you a drunk grandpa that's like kind of drifting at the wheel kind of like ah losing it yeah a little bit i think it's a good, show. It's a, it's a good ass show great show but i just wanted to frame also throw that framework in. i was like why did we why did it hit us why did it hit us i was just thinking about that while you were talking yeah i was like i think that's why it did definitely hit me in stride or hit us in stride for sure but then so that's why i was shocked to hear there was allegations on justin roiland yeah roiland is one of the writers i'm pretty sure the other guy is uh he voiced Rick Dan, and Morty, right? I can't remember. Yes. Dan yes. Harmon, who's a G. It's Dan Harmon, right? Okay. Yeah. He's, he's done multiple shows as well. So Com- those are the community. writers. Yeah, Community. He's a very, very funny guy. But yeah, there were some allegations, and these allegations happened a while ago. But they were just generally, just I guess they were uh, accusations of like domestic abuse. And then today, I just saw that those allegations were like dismissed in court due to lack of like evidence or you know like substantial evidence to make it beyond a reasonable doubt Hmm. whatever the terminology is for that yeah and like okay i don't know i guess so that opens up the question of like i guess it that's such a that's that's so rough it's like people i guess because you could just be so envious and be like i'm just gonna slander you i'm just gonna slander you it's like it's like a real crime right yeah that's a scary thought people just be like fuck that guy i'm gonna say anything to defame him yeah trying to get him canceled and it's like if 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 what if it was correctly dismissed then that's like super sucky for, for mr royland yeah if it, if it was truly just like off the wall bullshit allegations it's just like oh because so many people saw that so yeah. many people saw that a lot of people like I th- he got fired from rick and morty they're gonna bring on a new writer i'm not sure what's going on with that and now at this point but yeah so that's just like if that is what's going on that's some fucked up shit I feel bad for that man i also feel bad if he was abusing his partner and now he's not in trouble for it the fuck that guy the fuck that exactly <laughs> so tough how we can sway either way it's like man that guy got fucked or fuck that guy what's it's, the truth yeah what's the truth that's why i don't like the lies don't facilitate the lies don't mm. don't live in clouds of smoke you make it hard to see the truth i'm like I'm trying to figure out what's going on so we can be, create true opinions we can yeah. actually act and figure out how to treat people yeah try to s- uh, scrape out this landscape and make it as like a uh, true to the act like, draw, like this in this collective map that we all have to use together of what is existence it's like we should make the map as accurate as possible to what's actually out there People are like, no, I'm going to emphasize these mountains a little bit. Yeah. this would be, I have <laughs> No, a, they're not that fucking tall. It's, I have a really big forest, a really thick forest right here. It's really cool. That's where we get all our grain from. It's like, why are you fucking lying? Why? No. We don't even run grain here. What, what the are you fuck? talking about? There's, there's beautiful and true things to appreciate in anything. It's like, just take the time to like find them. The lazy mm-hmm. thing is to project what you want into something. And then it's like, it's just all a lie. It's like yeah. McDonald's food. <laughs> it's not good for you. Not good for you. No, you can live yeah. on it for sure. It'll sustain life. For sure. It'll sustain life. But 
and then the other thing is you start to like it. You get addicted to the shitty ass food. It's That's so happens, it's so real. backwards, yo. Yeah. Like the better food. What if you get addicted to good food? The things that happen to your body are like insane. Like the stuff that goes goes on in my body sometimes I realize it's so far from conceptual to like how my parents ever felt in their body ever. Mm. Cuz like I think there was one day where I ate clean for 3 days in a row and I had been in a habit of eating like banana bread or some kind of dessert in the evening, right? But no dessert, no nothing, just like yeah. Rice, grilled chicken, like clean ass eating days. Yeah, keeping it clean for real. And then I woke up that third day, and just the way my body felt, I was like, "Oh shit, this is, this is crazy." Ooh. And I was like, "This is so far removed from anything I felt as a kid or anything my family ever felt like." And I think that happens. I feel it happened in our body. I think that's why we like working out is because it's a physical, literal representation of something that happens in like all things. Mm-hmm. When you become like a take care of something, and you. Devote time and interest and attention to it, and it grows and blossoms into yeah. this thing greater than itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like working out with your body or like a garden, trying to plant something to make it cultivate. Yeah, like if you learn how to cook, like if you're cooking like hot dogs versus if you learn how to cook like a perfect steak on a grill, I feel like the feeling of like what you're doing is like, I don't know, it's just like way more fulfilled and maximized. Yeah, I can see that. Hitting a good shot, hitting a deep three. I guess the, there's just a, I guess it's because in this metaphor with, Eating healthy food, it's making the right choice. That's what I'm trying to allude to more than anything. It's like the right choice, the healthier choice. You uh-huh. could be addicted to the bad choice. And it feels like it's cheap and easy to do. But like the right choice feels so good that it's like it, it, unexplainable. And then once you get addicted to making the right choice, that feeling of unexplainableness that you exist in is ridiculous. Isn't that crazy that things are just unexplainable? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, we, li- we exist in two different avatars here. We have two different whatever's going on here with this shit or not – or two, you too in this example, but everyone has their own hard drive, their own CPU that they're operating here, like with their own interpretation and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hell? Well, you mean in the sense where there's like the operating you and the you you have to deal with? Oh, no, I guess, no, that's like, a, I, I was just talking about you and I, but everyone has their own operating system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all individual. And I can't, there is something that isn't unexplainable because it is your own and I have my own. And yeah. Like, <laughs> like that is, that is a reality that we live in, but I think there's a more underlying reality where we're all the same thing. But, like, that's from a multi-multi mega vitamin talk. Like, <laughs> we don't feel that all the time. I sit here and you sit there. But that's the difficulty with trying to explain feelings to somebody, too. Yeah, it's like that hap- too. Happy is happy, but I'm like, like, fulfilled is different than happy, or, like, mm-hmm. bliss is different than happy. It's or... the same thing as, uh, or the unexplainability is the same thing as, like, uh, ex- experience. It's like, I can't tell you, I can tell you how this thing tastes, but you can't. It, it'll never do justice to the taste. Never. like I, I can never get there. I'm so far, I don't want to start. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel about just how i felt the other day and i feel that that's the thing worth pursuing in my mind that's why that's how i know making the right choice is the right thing because the feeling that you feel is so feeling is overwhelmingly good life's a feeling process feeling process i big sean said that at the end of an album it just stuck with me forever because i just think it is true you when it feels good you should stick with it and then like be super true with your like determination of what good is because yeah, like that's the other thing yeah eating a bunch of like cake you might feel one, good but this one like we were talking about right but no it's like you got to really feel good about it you yeah. know there's yeah a difference between feeling good feeling happy and feeling like fulfilled or like true joy true joyousness so, joyful let's pursue that higher joy yeah true. yes sir i meant that nice okay we're, we're rolling up on the last 15 here we're trying to get better about winding down i know i was like should we have to cut it or we yeah we should probably no, we shouldn't cut it right now, but we should be, we have time. We have All time. Right. Is this something know. else we want to cover? I, know, I, just, I just wanted to talk about, or I guess I wrote, had wrote and da- written down uh, Aaron Rodgers moving away from Green Bay. Is that official now? I guess. Has word broken, for real. No. They're no. trying to work out the structuring of the contract. It's taking mm. some time. Okay. It'll probably happen. I think they're trying to hedge it happening by making it headline news, kind of yeah. like forcing the teams to like, ugh, I guess I, we'll make the deal or whatever. I'm more, <laughs> me, like representing the public is like, did that happen already yet? Or is like, what, what's going on? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and I guess that's being pers- yeah pushed by media narrative. Obviously, the Jets seem like they're going to be really good. Uh, they fucking traded away Elijah Moore and brought in Mequel Hardman, I think. It's like Mequel Hardman and uh, the r- offensive rookie of the year at the other yeah. wide receiver. And yeah, Brees Hall. Name just escapes me at the moment. Really good player. Yeah, he went off. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson, there it is. Yes. They look yeah. like they could be great. That's awesome. The thing I don't like is I don't like the way Aaron Rodgers left the... I don't... Dude, like the city... End of an era. The city is where you got your paycheck. Green Bay literally owns their team. He like, wanted to... He wanted to or he, I think he... Or I'm not sure if he wanted to say per se, but I, I don't know. I saw him in like a... 
talking to Pat, Pat McAfee. Uh-huh. I, I love how Pat McAfee is able to get this info. That's so lit. He's so cool. <laughs> he's like an ex-NFL punter. And With the podcast. That's amazing. Yeah, and he's able to get breaking news before like NFL analysts. Yeah, because like, <laughs> the players like him better. Yeah. They're like, all right, I'm about to go tell everybody that I'm doing this, but I'll just, mm-hmm. can I come on your podcast at noon and then say it there first? Yeah, so Aaron Rodgers is talking to him about it and he's expressing and talking to Pat about the idea that like, I didn't really want to leave the city. Like I love, I love Green Bay. Like I had a great time there. Like I'm, I'm forever indebted and forever grateful for my time and the people and the fans of, of Green Bay and Wisconsin, whatever. So like, and I'm sure, but I guess he had also mentioned in that, that the organization of Green Bay with the Packers were like already trying to move on, I guess, as well. So it was like, okay, this this is a, a mutual, more or less amiable a mutual split. Yeah, a good split. Just Maybe not sucks, a good split, though, but man. everyone it, it's it's in agreement. I don't, you know, I don't think he's like leaving them hanging out to dry. No, I think he's, he he did his he he did his thing. He did his thing. He's a if you don't know quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, very very well known quarterback in the league. Been for that team for super super long time. Kind of like Tom Brady in the. Patriots. Yeah, franchise player. Yeah, face of the team for a while, and then when that player leaves, it's like a whole thing. It's a whole thing. There's a lot of. This is gonna be a lot of sad people. You might you might <laughs> might find out at your, at your workplace who are some diehard Green Bay fans over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, or whenever the season starts again. Yeah, it's like a breakup. They're gonna have to start all over. <laughs> Good quarterback. I've been there. I think his last name is Love though. So. Good luck to that guy. Jordan Love. He got drafted four or five years ago. I remember he was played for like Michigan or something. He was like supposed to be good. Mm-hmm. He, I think he may played for Notre Dame. He's supposed to be good. Okay. We'll see what's up with that. He's Wait, been there a while. Yeah, also, partially while I was talking about Rodgers, or what we're going to do? Colts are getting a quarterback. It's our turn to have love. Hey. I'm very excited. As I mentioned, I'm from California, not from here. Matthew is also not from here. Yeah, I'm from Indianapolis. I was born in Indianapolis. Uh, I lived there till I was... East Coast. <clears throat> like five or so. And then... Yeah, we moved down to Austin, and then I moved, like, all over to Texas. A lot. I lived in, like, seven or eight different cities. Um, moved around a lot. 35, baby. Just up and down I-35. <laughs> and, Very uh, familiar. Yeah, so from just Austin to San Marcos, where I went to school, to San Antonio, where I live now. That's kind of like my bio- biographical background. Mm-hmm. Um, Through the river cities, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Indianapolis is a river. But you like the Colts, though. Yes, I'm diehard. Diehard Colts fan. Peyton, Colts Man- guy. <clears throat> Peyton Manning growing up. Kind of fell into that Another culture. Another face of the, yeah. Yeah, big face of just the NFL in the league. Big franchise guy. Yeah. So, I, and plus, I feel like being a fan of a sports team teaches you how to be loyal to something, like through the ups and the downs, and like you defend it even when you're wrong, and you come up with good arguments for you why. You have a lot of hope. Yeah. It gives you a lot of hope. <laughs> you have a lot of hope a lot, or hopefully you do. Yeah. <laughs> if your team's decent. Yeah, you can always create some kind of scenario where great things happening for your team. Yeah. You're like, even when you're losing, you're like, well, we're gonna get a great pick next year. We're losing the best out of anybody. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's I would, nobody is losing as great as we Super are. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, playoffs, playoffs. Good draft pick. Good draft. Pick. We're getting good draft picks. So that's what we're doing. We're smart. <laughs> we're geniuses. <laughs> the way we lost to Houston last year was amazing. So yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that was, it seemed like we were throwing the game because we're the best at losing when we have to lose. Yeah, so, that's getting a win when you have to get a win. Dubs. That's a dub. <laughs> get your bucket. Yes. So, yeah, we have a great draft pick in the draft. So, I'll be on the podcast wearing the jersey of the player that we draft the week that we draft him. I'm sure you'll, yeah, I'm sure you'll see some, some cult attire yes. in some episodes to come. But uh, partially sure. what I was talking about with the, or what I wanted to touch on with the Rodgers thing, I, I kind of already mentioned it when I was talking about it. But it, it, isn't it crazy that, yeah, Pat McAfee can get information faster than like the people who are paid to get information? It's like I saw it with when I was scrolling through on yeah because I follow Pat McAfee on Instagram and it was just like Adam Thielen hits him up he's like do you want breaking news <laughs> he's like uh, sure he's like, just signed a deal with the Panthers three years locked and loaded like it's good it, it's on he's just like boom McAfee McAfee puts it up and then he's like or Pat's talking to like an NFL analyst or somebody who's in that space and then he's like oh yeah I like I I had posted about the I like called someone about the Thielen thing he's like oh yeah McAfee had this eight minutes ago (laughs) eight minutes and you're irrelevant (laughs) yeah why are you calling me (laughs) that's tough you're fired (laughs) oh you're behind yeah that's That's tough Like, like the narrative where people trying to like extra extra read all about it that's their job for sure like they have to be the first one there and that's why the players love to give it to pat because he's Mm -hmm. like hometown hero yeah there's the it's it's he's independent of that kind of like the the idea of the politics whatever that word really means behind the politics it's like news reporting the red tape yeah yeah Yeah, all the red tape behind shit and yeah like the, the reporting of news on the nfl or whatever news you know yeah, because like being not cool with the reporters has gone back to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan would get got super mad at the reporters after like his dad passed away. Yeah, and they were just 
I think for a while, it's like a game to be a good interviewee and to try to do it well. But after like three or four years of the, like every time after every game, you got to like talk to these people. It's the same people like year after year after year. And you're just like, I don't know. I guess if they leave a bad impression on you, you're just like, I don't want the Pat McAfee reports my news, dog. Like yeah. that, That's who does my shit. Because it feels like the other people are kind of held within the constraint of I or maybe have to live in the mode of I have to be enticing it had to be like oh or like it had to be a little controversial or uh, not confrontational controversial yeah you know or or do something i had to get get some views get some some clickbait or some that that idea is definitely lingers within a lot of publicists or people who have to gain attention that that's kind of a unnecessary or necessary evil with that with that yeah 100 so, but but pat is kind of like rid of that it's like people I'm, I, they would be much more likely to go to pat with like <laughs> Because he, you're not going to spin this, or you're not going to. He critiques the world. He critiques mm-hmm. the league. He critiques the reporters. He doesn't critique the players. Yes, the, everything else is critiquing the players, and I think that's why the players like Pat. They're like, "That's our dog, bro. He's always on our side. He always represents us well." Like, yeah, that's so cool. That is cool. That's good, so cool, good for man. him, bro. Yeah, that's tight. I'm that's a dog. so cool. I love that. I love. Yeah, that watch the him. Pat McAfee podcast. Watch Rick and Morty, mm-hmm. or don't. I, I, you know, live your life. Live your life. But those are good recommendations, though. Yeah. I saw somebody in the H-E-B. Life of Pi. Slow Dog Millionaire. Watch Life of Pi. We're going to book club about that. We're going we're gonna to movie club about that. Do whatever else you like. I don't care. But watch that one. We will definitely watch Life of Pi and talk about some bits of that next week. I saw somebody in the H-E-B today with a, with a Pat McAfee shirt on. And I was like, no way. Nice. Yeah. It was, nice. a, it was Pat, it said Pat McAfee nice. and, and Hawk Sports Talk and things of that nature. Putting on for the city. Representing. That's awesome. You'd love to see it. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess we're gonna be wrapping up this one. We're trying to save some time here, we're trying to get better at that. We we've been going over, but we could talk forever. Yeah, well, I want to make these hour and a half pods, but they we got to, they're constrained to an hour and fifteen minutes right now. No, we have, we have extra time. I want to record in the morning. I feel like we have more. I have more energy in the morning. Yeah, we're just we've like, been kind of getting it in wherever we can fit it in. Yeah, but ideally, yeah, whenever I can construct my ideal highest heaven. Oh, I remember talking about that because I remember Jordan. <laughs> I think that that's what we're talking about. Jordan Jordan Peterson talking about having your highest heaven. And aiming towards that, in my highest heaven, I get my shit done in the morning. Nice. I like wake up early, I work out, and then we knock out studio time, this studio time, and then I have the rest of my day to chill. Yeah. I think it's my ideal vibe, vibe, vibe. And then back to talk, talk on what Jordan Peterson was talking about. The highest heaven is something that you run towards, and then you can also conceptualize, you know your downfalls. Like, what's my, if I continue with these downfalls and stay on this bullshit, where would it end me up in my personal hell? What would that look like? And that's the motivation to run from. So you have like a run from and a run to. And that's like optimal motivation. It's good for your brain chemistry. Your brain is built to be goal rewarded and like pain Avoid avoided. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So if you align your framework with your neurochemistry and then like work your perspective in in those regards, then like things get easier to do. Yeah. I think that's like... The game opens up to you. Yeah, it's nice conceptually to say like have a hell to run from and a heaven to run to because it makes the Bible make sense and it makes sense in your brain like a anecdote does, but it's like literally neurochemistry too. Mm-hmm. That's why Jordan Peterson's so fucking crazy. His advice is like levels deep on that bitch. He's in that bitch. Yes. That shit's fucking gas, dude. Yeah, yes. so yeah, I agree. So then this was the hell podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been getting it in where we can fit it in yeah, that's the at thing. the late nights. But yeah. now we're going to be yeah, trying to knock it out earlier, get a little more energy. Yeah, because I watch these podcasts and I watch them and I think to myself, how can I be better so that like the people that watch these podcasts every week, like I just want it to get better and better and better for y'all. Yeah. You're like really good yeah, fans. Always, always trying to be on the up and up. Yeah, we got really good fans. I love you guys. I love everybody. Thank you for the love and support. Seriously. Appreciate everybody so, so much. It steps show. on my heart. We will be dropping music videos and stuff real soon. I promise. It's coming. Oh, yeah. You guys want to do our video. Yeah, we could drop the... I'm just, I'm just going to drop the Gone video, probably. Just like, here you go. Just drop that. Maybe put some little bit of money behind that. And then drop the New Era video, probably shortly thereafter. Put some more money behind that. And then we're going to drop the three-pack. Put some money behind that. Three new songs and then let out. that all run. And while that's running, doing its thing, we'll be right back here next Thursday. Hell yes. I love you guys. Have a great day. Have a good week. Love Check you. back in. Have a good fucking week. Let's go. Get a buck. Let's fucking go. Buck. You know what it is. Buck. Get it done time. Buck. Woke up. Buck. <laughs> Blessed. <laughs> don't, don't leave me hanging. Buck. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs> Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we might go. I just took this switch. I'm in my zone. Feelings on my wrist.